Hello. This session is the continuation of the theoretical part of the hydrology video tutorial. We already saw what a catchment is and the hydrological methods that are available in WIP. This video tutorial addresses the rainfall runoff method, soil moisture method, because it is more robust and widely used to develop hydrological models. The soil moisture method divides the catchment into two soil layers. The first one is called root zone and the second one is called deep zone. Different processes of the water balance occur at each layer. The catchment has a subclassification defined by the disaggregation that was considered appropriate to represent processes such as evapotranspiration, runoff, infiltration, and percolation. Each classification of the catchment corresponds to the root zone, while the deeper zone is assigned to the entire catchment. It can be said that the hydrological model that follows the soil moisture method has nine parameters that influence each of the water balance processes. This method converts the climate in each catchment into flows to the rivers or groundwater nodes, simulating processes such as runoff, interflow, percolation, or base flow. The surface runoff is controlled by the runoff resistance factor. The direct runoff only occurs if the root zone is saturated. The root zone outflows are the interflow and percolation, which depend on the soil water capacity, the soil water conductivity, and the preferred flow direction. The preferred flow direction divides the water flow between interflow and percolation. The deep zone also has a deep water capacity and a deep water conductivity, which controls the base flow. On the other hand, like any model, it is necessary to set the initial conditions of some parameters. Initial C1 and C2 are the relative storage, expressed as the percentage of the total water capacity of the root zone and the deep zone, respectively. We see on this slide the mathematical model that has the soil moisture method. As you can see, it is a water balance between inflows and outflows where the difference between the in and out at each of the two layers represents the moisture changes in the root zone and the deep zone. The method is selected for each catchment in the data view in the advanced method tab. The variables appear depending on the chosen method. These will be the variables to be entered for each catchment for the soil moisture method. Precipitation, mean temperature, humidity, wind speed at 2 meters high, cloudiness fraction, latitude, freezing point, melting point, and albedo must be entered on the climate tab. The cloudiness fraction is also called relative sunshine duration. Do not enter data of cloud fraction. WIP calculates evapotranspiration from this input data. Besides, this method has the option to activate a glacier module to simulate the accumulation and melting of ice on the land surface. If this module is activated, other input variables will be required. The hydrological parameters of the model are entered under the land use tab. The crop coefficient, the water capacities and conductivities of each zone, the runoff resistance factor, the preferred flow direction, and the initial moisture conditions. Climate data must be analyzed and processed before entering it in WIP. Quality checks must be made to verify that the assumption of seasonality, consistency, and homogeneity is met. Once we have collected, 
processed and analyzed the hydrometeorological information, each catchment must be characterized. You could estimate precipitation surfaces for each time step of the model by using interpolation methods. Then, the hydrological parameters must be assigned to each catchment. Once we configure the hydrological model in WIP, the model must be calibrated and validated. The model performance should be evaluated considering goodness of fit metrics and assessing whether the soil parameters assigned to each catchment allow to calculate the water balance components. Before using a hydrological model in WIP, it must be calibrated and validated. This table shows several goodness of fit metrics that can be used to assess the performance of the model. Each one has its own advantages and limitations. Some of these metrics evaluate the model performance to represent peak flows and some others to represent low flows. This depends on the modeling interest. To calculate goodness of fit metrics, simulated and observed stream flow are exported and processed by using, for example, R, Python, or Excel. You can also export the water balance components for each catchment and analyze whether the assigned soil parameters represent it correctly. For example, what percentage of the precipitation becomes above transpiration, runoff, snow, interflow, or base flow? Is there an increase or decrease of the soil moisture? Or does it become groundwater flow? It is essential not only to represent the observed stream flow properly, but also the water balance components. The calibration and validation stage of a hydrological model is critical. A model that cannot represent the past properly will not represent the future correctly and it could not contribute to decision making. A model intends to be a representation of a real system. Its objective is to support decision-making processes by modeling future scenarios that answer the what-if type of questions. Models have a warm-up period, so it is suggested to exclude the results of the first year. Seven results should be analyzed when evaluating the model performance during the calibration and validation stage. Time series of observed versus simulated stream flow. These results are analyzed where the stream flow gauge points were added in WIP. Annual total stream flow. Annual cycle. When setting up this graph, you should exclude years with a considerable amount of missing data. Flow duration curves. Relative soil moisture 1 and 2. These graphs should show a stable behavior over time from a seasonal point of view, except for extreme conditions. Water balance, land class inflows and outflows. There are five recommended steps to calibrate and validate a WIP model. First, the hydrological parameters assigned to each catchment must be adjusted once the results are obtained, the hydrographs should be analyzed. You can use Excel, R, Python, or any other programming language for estimating the goodness of fit metrics. Finally, when the model performance is satisfactory, it is good practice to save that version of the model. These steps should be repeated until the model performance is good enough, considering the modeling interest. For example, if the study is focused on the water utility, it might be more important to represent better the low flows than peak flows. The adjustment of the hydrological parameters should be made by analyzing the hydrographs. 
each parameter has a greater influence on some specific processes. For example, the crop coefficient controls the evapotranspiration. The runoff resistance factor can drive or hinder infiltration. It should be adjusted considering conditions such as foliar area index, slope, and soil type. The conductivity and water capacity of the root zone and the preferred flow direction control how fast the water moves through the top layer, how much percolates the deep layer, and how much flows into the river. The conductivity and water capacity of the deep zone control the rate at which water moves in this bucket. The table on the right shows the default value for each parameter, the possible interval, and what impacts they will have on the model due to an increase in its value. For example, if you are looking to increase the peak flow response, it can be done by increasing the surface runoff. You can adjust the runoff resistance factor and the root zone conductivity because it is directly affected by these parameters. On the other hand, if the base flow wants to be increased, the preferred flow direction, the deep zone conductivity, and water capacity must be adjusted. The relationship between the different terms in the mathematical model is non-linear. Therefore, when affecting one term, Others are affected indirectly.